Hey everyone, just a quick note before the show begins. This episode was recorded back in July, so I apologize if there's any dated references, but this one should be a fun one. But with that out of the way, enjoy the episode. Hey, and welcome back to Game Talk. I'm your host, Dan and me on today. I'm joined by Connor. Hey. And Mike. Hello. Uh, and today we have a spicy one, uh, probably a very controversial one. We are going to tournament style rank our favorite consoles. Now, this is not a comprehensive list of all video game consoles. It's just mostly the ones we're mostly familiar with and have the most history with. It's it's every... So, so a couple of notable exclusions. Other than Nintendo, we're not doing anything before, like, PS1, Xbox era. Um, and, and no Sega. No Sega. Yeah, so we're, no Dreamcast, just because we don't have Bad enough experience with them. And uh, a PC has no representation on this list. And also, for the purposes of this tournament, I'm going to say anything that only came to one console and PC, we're just going to call that an exclusive. Okay. For, for, for the sake of argument. Because PC is not represented. No Steam Deck, no anything like that. Also, no Virtual Boy, because I, you know, why why would we do that? <laughs> All right. So, we will include the tournament bracket in the description of the episode, as well as in the thumbnail of the episode. So, you can refer to that, follow along, what have you. That being said, Connor, do you want to kick us off? I want to lay down some kind of ground rules for this, I think, first. Uh, That's probably a good idea. I think, so for comparing consoles, I think backwards compatibility gets you like points, but we're not yeah. going to use the GameCube's l- entire library like as a hard argument for the Wii, for instance. Okay, that's a good point. Because then like, you know, the Wii is basically just a GameCube plus extra stuff. However, anything that got like an improved port or something, if we're talking exclusives, that I think is worth mentioning as a as a valuable exclusive to have. I think uh, the Wii's Virtual Console, for instance, and like the PS3 is basically the same thing, PlayStation Classics or whatever. Uh, points for that, obviously, but we're not going to double jeopardy. You don't get points for having the entire SNES catalog. It's just a nice to have. Right. Yeah. And one other point, we are excluding current gen, so no PS5, no Xbox Series, simply because we are still... All things considered, before the halfway point of this console generation, we still and haven't really, I feel like, achieved and sort of identity for this generation. So. And I feel like this generation has had lo- some of the lowest adoption rates of console owners. Uh, that's, that's definitely not true. That's not true. Yeah, PS5 is outselling PS4 I, in launch line. I mean, it's, and it's obviously outperforming like the GameCube, but I, uh, I, I do just think there's not enough exclusives yet for us to meaningfully make the case plus you know everything else has rose tinted goggles on it in some sense yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, we didn't have enough to do like a fair a a truly fair bracket so i kind of seeded it for content so uh yeah let's go ahead and hop in to round one uh, i guess we got the wii u versus the xbox one and i this is a hard one because I do not. This is like a hard one because they consoles. both suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I lean Wii U on this one pretty hard. I think honestly, I lean Wii U as well. Yeah, I think I mean, the Xbox One is one of, if not the worst consoles in it's, history. It's one of. It's definitely uh, one of the worst on this list. I I yeah. hate to dunk on the Xbox One too much, so I'm just gonna say some things that the Wii U gave us that it doesn't really get a lot of credit for. Super Mario 3D World. Uh, it, just a lot of games that got better ports on the Switch. Uh, Pikmin 3 was an uh, insane, insanely good game uh, that we hadn't gotten in a long time. <laughs> I mean, Breath of the Wild came to Wii U. Breath of the Wild came to Wii U. Uh, Mario Kart 8, a lot of a lot of people think of that as a yeah. Switch game, myself included. Right. I still Mario think Kart Mario 8 Kart started 8 is, on Wii U. It's the prettiest game on Switch to this day, and it's not even a Switch game. It's a Wii U game. And it really is kind of like, in my opinion at least, it is the pinnacle of the Mario Kart series, and that happened on Wii U. So, Yeah, so uh, I... We I also think- got... Smash two Smash games that for we oh yeah but one was on the 3ds so yeah yeah uh, did the 360 have any or not 360 Xbox One have any notable exclusives Halo Five was Xbox One Forza games 
uh, I remember Rise Son of Rome was a popular launch game. Yeah, it was great. I think uh, there there were a few. Like it wasn't um the Banjo Kazooie or were those Xbox 360? No, that's 360. Nuts and Bolts 360. is 360. No, uh, not Rare Nuts Replay and Bolts was the one. remakes. Rare Replay. Yeah, Rare Replay was. Strong. Rare Replay was on Xbox One. I'll give them uh, points for Rare Replay. That doesn't beat the Wii U because the Wii U. Had I'm going to subtract countries. points for the. Uh, the mandatory connect integration for like yes, several years for so, sure uh yeah uh, i where where do you stand on this mike i think connor and i i i mean i didn't play the xbox one so i mean i never i've never owned an xbox all things to, to be clear um, so i i have owned an vehicles. xbox one and to be fair to give microsoft credit where credit's due right like after the debacle with uh the the announcement and Don Matrick saying, you know, buy a 360 if you don't like the always online and all of that. Phil Spencer's really turned that console around. And by the end of the gen, Xbox One was a nice little machine. Um, but it was too, you, you know, know, even it even, was too late. Even Phil Spencer says they lost that gen and it was the worst one to lose. Yeah. So I, I'm so, going to just go ahead and give this one to the Wii U, I think. I think yeah. And I, I do want to shout out uh, one other thing because I don't think the Wii U will get many shout outs from this point onward. But for the Wii U, I do want to shout out some of its cool async multiplayer stuff that you could do with like the tablet, yes, and like Wii controllers. That was hold on, stuff. hold on. Last minute, last minute thing. Power Star Golf for the Xbox One. Power Star Golf. Golf. All right, let's knock yeah. Xbox One out. Yeah, let's yeah, knock, let's it, knock it out. <laughs> it, it didn't have much. All right, so. Uh, Wii U moves on to round two. Okay, so next up we have, and this is kind of a spicy one, Xbox versus PlayStation, the first console for each of these guys. So what do you guys want to start with? All right, I'm going to start with my defense of the original PlayStation because it kind of innovated when it came out. Because these are both the first outings for each system, each man- console manufacturer. Yeah, the PlayStation One definitely edges ahead because it was the f- first to use a CD. Yeah, one of the earliest three D graphics, and and they really came out with a sort time. of bang, right? Like, yeah, it's so it, many. It immediately stood started. as a challenger to Nintendo and Sega. Yeah, yeah. Um, I- but I, I all- gotta say, the yeah. Xbox, like, Halo, first of all, Halo 1 and 2, in- insanely good games that I did not, I was not putting respect on the name until recently. Uh, I believe Mech Warrior lived on the Xbox, I think. Mm, hold on. I played a lot of good Xbox games. I didn't own an Xbox, though, but I, I re- oh, well, that was a multiplat. I have, I have a ton of really fond memories. Well, even though it's a multiplat, it wasn't on PS1. You get, like... Star Wars Battlefront. Mech II. Warrior never lived on. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking of a different Xbox. game. But like Maybe Star a, Wars Battlefront uh, Two on the original Xbox was just my game. Like I I went to yeah. My buddy there Brock's are some house. really good games on Xbox. Star I I have a fond memory. I never owned an original Xbox, but Maybe I went either. over to friends' houses that had the Xbox, and I remember having lots of fun with Star Wars Battlefront Two, having lots of fun with Halo Two. Xbox was also like the first mature, I would say, console I ever played. Like, a lot of these games were not Mario. Like, it was shooters. It was like it, it, Xbox, just as a brand at the time, was a little grittier than anything I was used to. And, and PS2 became that eventually, but we're, we're not yeah. talking PS2. We're talking PS1. However, Spyro exists. Spyro, Crash, Spyro Final exists, Fantasy Crash Bandicoot, Seven, Bandit, yeah, yeah, Crash Final Bandicoot, Fantasy Final Seven, Fantasy, yeah. games Rayman? that really define the like redefine the JRPG. Yeah, that and still like, you can still feel the influence to today. Gran Turismo had Rayman? its start on PlayStation One, which you know none of us are interested, in, but that's a huge, huge franchise. Yeah, Ace Combat uh, got its start here. I I think mm. this one goes to PlayStation personally. I I, and I, I think th- I think you know I think Xbox is respectable here, but I agree yeah. this one goes to PlayStation. Yeah, I agree. No disrespect to the Xbox, but what you're you're pro PlayStation as well, Mike? Yeah, I'm pro PlayStation. All right, all right. Moving along, then let me 
mark I, I this have one. A, I got my it's, it's working now. Oh, you got it working again? Okay. I'm going to mark it just in case. <laughs> All uh, right. Our next yeah. round is the Nintendo Entertainment System versus the PSP, PlayStation Portable. Okay. All right. So are we talking uh, American release of the Nintendo Entertainment System? Yes, because I don't know enough Ooh. about the Famicom. Mm. Mm, yeah, uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System, since I played a little bit of it, notoriously hard to get things working on. Okay, I... You are not wrong. So the NES has this has this fun quirk. The, the NES saved gaming, f- for one thing. Put some yeah, respect on the name. It saved I gaming will put some in respect. America. But yes, one of the consequences of that is that they didn't want it to look like a video game console or a toy. They made it look like a VCR, which <laughs> yeah, resulted in, it's called a 72-pin connector, and it's the slot that you plug the games in, and then you like push them down to latch into place, and it is extremely, well, at the time, it worked great. And if you get a new 72-pin connector today, it works great. However... Give it thirty years and they stop working. Who who who'd have thought? And it's not self cleaning like a lot of consoles are. Yeah, it stopped working. I think for my NES. But like if we're going to include console revisions, which I think we should, the NES toaster exists and it doesn't have any of those problems. Yeah, I mean, you go back that far and you really can't make an argument for graphics looking crisp because it was an eight bit console. I. I like, would disagree with that. I think the NES is the first, it's the earliest console where graphics were pretty good. Like, Castlevania yeah. looks really good. The sound chip, I think the sound chip gets points, honestly. Yeah, the sound chip, yeah, gets the sound chip is legendary. Uh, then again, the PSP but, also suffered because it had those stupid those UMDs. UMDs. Yep. The so UMDs I, this is a battle of terrible methods of storing your games. So who, who had so, a PSP? I never had one. I had, I, I had a PSP, and I liked the PSP a lot. It was fun. It had some fun games. I enjoyed Daxter. But, it, I mean, we got to be real here. Like, we're talking about the, the NES Yes. We're talking about The Legend of Zelda. We're talking about Super Mario Bros. 3. Like, I just don't see any world in which the PSP could take this over the NES. Yeah. I agree, but I do. The PSP sold extremely well, and it had Monster Hunter. And so it gets a lot of points for that. But I I agree yeah. about NES on this one. Like, Metroid. Like, there's oh my God, it's just yeah. every, every, so every, many yeah. legendary, legendary franchises that still are relevant today got their start here. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say NES. All right, we're going to mark it as NES, and we're going to move on. This next one, I, I don't know how hard it is for you guys, but it's N64 versus PlayStation It's very 4. difficult for me. And this is... PlayStation 4. I knew this was going to be really hard for Amid. I, I say N64 without hesitation, but I knew this was going to be really hard for Amid. Uh, I mean, the PlayStation 4 was the start of uh, graphics getting... Three, it was the start of 3D gaming for Nintendo, at least. I was talking about the PlayStation 4. Oh. Uh, the start of graphics getting to where we really can't improve them other than just making uh, lights a little prettier. That's that's a little bit true. The PlayStation 4 is not that much better than the PS3 to me. Yeah. But it is better. It is the, better. The PS4... get Okay, so I'm going to give the PS4... It gets points for Bloodborne, obviously. Um, but I, I bought a PS4 for $200 in 2018 and I only ever played four games on it. Uh, the, the, I mean, um, I, I could say I bought a PS4 at launch and I put like thousands of hours into yeah. it. So I... uh, Other you, I mean, the controller for the PS4 slaps, but the N64 had a lot of big revolutionary games on it. The N64 it also, did, yeah. it sold like poop, though. It it was not a popular console. But, okay, yeah, so, but, okay so I guess we need to talk about this now. Like, Do we need to consider sales, though? Like, I think it's worth talking about. I, it's worth it's talking not a, about. It's not a definitive thing, but like, the N64, it's got Super Mario 64. It has Ocarina of Time. It has the Majora's first Smash Bros. Yeah. It has Majora's Mask. F Zero, Mario too, Kart 64. Like, that's however, why it's so unfair. That's like too. Like, what can compete with that? I Nothing. own all of the good N64 games, and I can hold them all in one hand, though. Like, there are not that many good N64 games. It's just the ones that exist are extremely good. The N64 did not take discs. It has the most heinous controller known to man. 
<laughs> the one that would eat away at your palms. And it is actually kind of like a lot of these games are not super great to go back to. A lot of them have had, mo- uh, you know, Super Mario 64 is easy to go back to, I would argue. But most of the best in 64 games have a modern release that is easier to play. Yeah. That, like, especially the Zelda games, I would say play the 3DS version if you're going to play any of those. Yeah, but like it's at at the same time like it's hard to deny like the impact, the sheer impact of like games like Ocarina of Time, you know, like games like Super Mario 64. <clears throat> I, I mean my me. vote goes in 64 for sure. I like So, it. Uh, okay, so let me talk about the PlayStation 4 for a sec, right? So, the PS4 is where PlayStation really as a brand sort of exploded. See, I would uh, I would attribute that to the PS3. Yeah, I'd throw that to the PlayStation 3 or 2. So the PS3 Honestly. laid the groundwork, but the PS4 was, it was kind of where like, they were like, okay, we're going to sort of dominate now. The Last of Us uh, came ooh. out on the PS3. Like, the Last of Us came out on the PS3, but like, PlayStation 4 sold way more than PS3. I'm going to make it an argument. More, yeah, but that's not. That the PlayStation 2 was where the Sony brand really exploded. It, okay, so it did, right? But then they sort of went into like a weird direction, right? Like they changed kind of their identity during the PS3 era. And that's the effects of that is still felt in the PS4 era and beyond. But I just want to highlight some games here, some games that I think are quite exceptional. Go for it. Uh, Persona 5 was a PlayStation exclusive. Exclusive because it's on Switch now. I mean, it was and exclusive Xbox. for many, many, for, for the duration of the PS4 life cycle. Well, it was also on PS3. Ah, right. Right. Forgot about the PS3. <laughs> I, I uh, I'll give it to you, but let's acknowledge yeah. it's on the PS3. Okay, so Uncharted Four: A Thief's End, Extremely masterful good. game, masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, excellent game. Horizon Zero Dawn, pretty revolutionary game in the sense that it's starting like a whole new series of projects for Sony. Like Horizons, they're trying to make Horizon the next big thing. And across Horizon 1 and 2, the game has sold over 30 million copies, which I think is very impressive for a new IP. I would say it's a powerful IP. I wouldn't say anything about it's revolutionary. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's I think revolutionary was the wrong it's word. Powerful exagger- is a better yeah. word. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marvel's Spider-Man. So this game, uh, very good. Game. it really brought Spider-Man back to video games in a sense, in a big way. Because we got Spider-Man games. Too. What's up? It lit the world on fire too. Like, yeah, yeah. So the like it was so big that like PlayStation basically, it, it it's their like front runner now in terms of like mascots, in terms of like sales. Like when you think PlayStation, you think Spider Man, um, which makes sense because Sony owns Spider Man. But like they really sort of capitalized like one two punch of like, hey, they have Tom Holland making Spider Man movies for Marvel. And now they have like a really good, excellent PlayStation 4 Spider Man exclusive for their game consoles. Uh, the and biggest is, one. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. This, this is one of the four games. Spider Man was one of the four games I played. Yeah. It was, it was God it was of War. I got it for. God of War, God, huge. God of War was massive. Yeah. And while God of War got its original start on the PS2, uh, this God of War in 2018 actually did revolutionize the yeah, franchise it it and bring it into game. a whole new direction. And of course, I also have to bring up much to your all's distaste probably, but The Last of Us Part 2. Oh, yeah. Excellent swan song to the PlayStation 4, one of my top games of all time. That being said though, like nostalgia is so strong for me, you know, like Nintendo I so many fond memories of playing Mario 64, Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, we forgot Mario about Kart, Banjo? Smash Brothers. What's up? Yeah. I completely forgot about Banjo. Yeah. I know Connor hates Banjo. But... Oh god. I, I do Donkey not, Kong I don't 64. Hate it. I don't like it. Donkey I I unironically love Donkey Kong 64. So a game so good it killed its entire shot. <laughs> where do you where do you sit, Mike? In sixty four. I honestly, I'm on Team N sixty four. I have a lot of very fond memories of the N sixty four, and see, my PlayStation that, four has sat unused for four years. That's two so, for N sixty four. But if Amit, I could be swayed if you see come this in is with enough passion this for PS four. But this is so tough for me because like. This this genuinely probably is going to be the hardest like I have to think about the entire bracket right here 
Cause I, like, I'm but, not certain that that's going to be the case. We have some doozies. Oh, yeah, we have some doozies. I, I mean, but these these two these are, are your probably these two are probably my favorite consoles. And it is painful like, that you're having to right leave here. one in round one. Yeah. So I so I have to go with like my heart here and go N64 because oh, of the nostalgia factor. Like I'm I'm very much susceptible to nostalgia. So yeah. It was not an easy choice by any means, and if you ask me tomorrow, I might change my answer, but for now, I'm going to go N64. <laughs> so let's chase that with an easy one. Uh, All right, we're, wait, well, before we do that, we're into round two now. We're so into round, round two. two. So we had a lot of consoles that had buys that we'll be introducing in this round, uh, because we just had a weird number. So now we are in round two. Uh, we have the PlayStation 2 versus the Wii U. This goes to the PS2. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're this, not this even arguing. A competition. <laughs> this isn't but even let's, a competition. Let's just say the Wii U did its best. It, yeah, it, I mean, it did its it be, Honestly, beat one thing, which is quite impressive, actually. The Wii, the this Wii is U, the trap round. I just want to say why the Wii U failed, in my opinion. The Wii U failed partially because Nintendo appealed to this blue ocean crowd and then tried to sell them The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. And the Wii U was not able to yeah. correct. They they from wanted that it. They wanted it both point. ways, yeah, right? They they they, they loved their casual audience. They went over with the Wii, but they didn't make more of those games. They started making like more the, Nintendo the games. Second the second screen gimmick. The second it screen didn't gimmick hit is as well. Fine. As they they did some cool things with it, but like it wasn't enough to carry a generation. No. Yeah, it wasn't like the Wii's motion controls, which carried the Wii. So let's give that to the PS2. Uh, this is a hard one for me, this next round. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System versus the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. I, well, I'm, Nintendo this is a tough round. One thing. I'm so, going to say the Super NES in its corner. It, this is the first time where visuals, they are still limited, but they do not feel limited. They're crisp. They look good. Good SNES color, games good are still gorgeous to this day, as yeah, far as I'm concerned. Super, you got Super Mario World. You got A Link to the Past. You have um, Earthbound. You have Star Fox, which is like really Nintendo's first foray into 3D bef before the N64. I think it was even. the first foray into 3D, actually. It, it wasn't the first. In console. In it it, it might have been the first console. No, because I think Doom mm. SNES had come out before this. Doom had an SNES port? Doom had, it? I have it. it. It's a red cartridge. It looks really cool. It runs terribly and it makes me sick to play. Yeah, it, but it's uh, this one's. Dude. I'm I mean, gonna like, say, okay. I, Game Boy has Pokemon though, and I'm Game gonna Boy say has Pokemon. Game Boy has Pokemon. Game Boy has Super Mario Land, which is not visually stunning, but competitive with Super Mario World, in my opinion. Okay, so Doom SNES came out after Star Fox. Okay, Game Boy has Pokemon. Pokemon yeah. is a tough one to Pokemon, get. Pokemon, Pokemon by itself could go toe to toe with a lot of. I also, this is just me speaking for myself, I like the way Game Boy games look, typically. I like the art style. I like the Game Boy Color color palette. And you could carry this thing with you. Like, Pokemon set the world on fire. You could play it with friends. You could trade. Super Mario Land is, like, some of the most creative, weird Mario. You have Link's Awakening, which in my... I like Link's Awakening more than I like A Link to the Past. It's It's weird. It's fun. Yeah, it, I, it's a it's very yeah. tough. But like with the SNES, you have some of the most legendary RPGs of all time. You've got Chrono Trigger. You've got Final Fantasy Four. I think Final Fantasy Six as well. Yes, and um, a Mega Man X series on the SNES. All well, the Earth, first like six of them were good. I think you got Earthbound. Earthbound, which is a cult classic. Uh, that that is still making waves, like it's still influencing games in a strong Donkey way. Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong Country, very good. Castle or it had Castlevania. It had Super sequels. Castlevania Four. Yeah, it had Super Metroid. It had Super which, Metroid, which is but Metroid, massive. yeah, Metroid Two is not a competitor with Super Metroid, but it is good. Yeah, Super Mario oh. World, Super Mario yeah. World, Super, Super Mario, Mario RPG. RPG. It's, it's just the first really Mario Kart on Super NES. So okay, so let me be let me be clear here. I've actually never owned an SNES. I did own a Game Boy. The Super NES was my first ever console. Like, that the first being video said, game I ever played was Super Mario World. I think I have to lean SNES here just due yeah. to how legendary a lot of these games are. Even though, like Pokemon is probably the biggest game we're pro we're going to discuss today. Period. 
I lean Game Boy on this because the portability just can't be slept on. The portability is critical. Where are you at, Mike? The lack of the backlight kills it for the Game Boy. And honestly, the Game Boy was better enjoyed through the Game Boy Advance. So I'm going to go with the SNES. Oh my god, I forgot. The SNES has the Game Boy player. It does. You could literally play Game Boy games on the SNES. That means we have to give it to the SNES. Wait, did the SNES have a Game Boy player? Yes, I think it, did. it did. The SNES had the Game Boy player because the N64 didn't. The Game Boy. I actually didn't even know that. Yeah, the I N64 had that, that like mod, like that modular thing you could sing on yeah, your controller. Yeah, it had the Super Game Boy. That yeah, was... the SNES was just the best way to the enjoy SNES Game had Boy the Super games. Game Boy. Yeah, and Game Boy games were enhanced for the Super Game Boy. Oh my god. You um the the N64 could only play Pokemon games actually. It could not play all Game Boy games. Yep. And then the GameCube uh, right. Game Boy yeah, player. Yeah. All right, so this next one is going to be an interesting one. I think This next one's very tough for me as it's well. It's the Xbox 360 versus the GameCube. I have This is crazy. Yeah. I have extremely fond memories of both of these. Xbox 360 yes. playing it at a friend's house because I've never owned an Xbox. But the GameCube is like if we the had GameCube this bracket is... in 2015, the GameCube would have won it for me. Like, yeah. And I, I think to this day, if you like held a gun to my head and you were like, you can only pick one console to keep from now on, I might say GameCube. Honestly. Really? Like, so it's I, got, have so, I have so many fond memories of GameCube. You got your Mario Kart Double Dash. You got Super Smash Bros. Got Melee, which Melee. is still to this You've day. Got Melee. Well played. We have Wind Waker, which in my Wind opinion Waker. is and an Twilight Princess on Ocarina of Time and every Wind way. Waker is still like I okay, not counting Tears of the Kingdom, because that might beat it, but it's still my favorite Zelda. Yes, me too. I love Wind Waker. Like you got Wind Waker, uh Twilight Princess. Yeah, Twilight Princess Twilight also Princess, came. Uh, Super yeah, Mario console. Sunshine. Super Mario Sunshine. People, people don't excellent. love it, but I do. The GameCube. Gonna... So and also, GameCube, it... I know this is degenerate. Star Fox Adventures was huge for me. <laughs> okay, I I also I know this is degenerate. Sonic Adventure Two Battle on the game. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, uh, although it is Sonic Adventure Two like, was later ported to the 360 as well, I'm gonna give it to the GameCube just because this is like the GameCube is win. When that game came alive. Yeah, like, Sonic Adventure 2 was originally a Dreamcast game, but Sega went out of the console business, and the first thing they did was port Sonic Adventure 2 to the GameCube. It came out on GameCube less than a year after the Dreamcast, I think. Also, like, uh, GameCube was where Resident Evil 4 released, which yeah. was a hugely influential game. Like, we wouldn't have Uncharted without Resident Evil. You know, like, you can draw a direct line back from, like, The Last of Us to Resident Evil. So, but let's talk four, specifically. Let's talk the Xbox 360 a bit, too. I think we're leaning GameCube, but... I'm gonna no, dock I, the so, I was just points positing or, all the GameCube's uh, positive issues. points. But, like, Xbox 360, I this, still maintain that this is the most fun I've ever had while playing games. Like, Halo going 3, home this is when Call of after Duty. school... Playing Call of Duty 4, playing Halo 3 with a bunch of friends after school. Golden days of gaming. Loved it. I have never felt more excluded than I did <laughs> not owning an Xbox 360 in middle school. Oh yeah, definitely. The 360 was the go-to console. Everybody, if you didn't own a 360, you were a disappointment. Everybody was going home, hopping on Xbox Live, and playing rated M video games that I wasn't allowed to play yet. I didn't have Xbox Live, so I I missed out. <laughs> but it was it, and, and also let's talk Xbox Live. Like this is Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty is when yeah. Xbox Live really caught fire. So I all also have to highlight. I think at this point in time, Mass Effect was also a console exclusive to Xbox. So it gets massive points yep. for that because Mass Effect, one of my favorite series, and I remember playing all of them on Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. So something about the Three Hundred and Sixty, I didn't even own one. Oh, but wait. Near, near and dear to my heart is Xbox Live Arcade. I'm docking the GameCube a little bit because Resident Evil 4 came out that same year for PlayStation 2. Oh, did it? Oh, really? did it really? Okay. Yep. Okay. Same. Fair. Not 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 even like a year later. If it was less, if it was more than a year, I would have said, yeah, it was GameCube exclusive but for at it, least a year. If the Xbox Live Arcade did not exist, like that, kickstarted indie gaming in a huge way. Like that that gave that took indie games that were normally like weird, only like people who are really dedicated might play them on their PC or something. And they were kind of hard to get working sometimes that put them on the stage. Like you got braid, you've got super meat boy 
and Fez are the three big ones I can think of that like these came to Xbox 360. They were downloadable games and they they, they were trailblazers. Like the, they lit the world on fire. It, and it, I also in the indie space. I also have to give a huge shout out to Fable. Like Fable, super fun game only on Xbox that I was introduced to on 360. Uh, Banjo Kazooie resurfaced on 360 with nuts and bolts. While it might not be how I wanted to see Banjo Kazooie, it was nice seeing Banjo Kazooie. Went again, on to inspire Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Unironically, yeah. yeah. Gears of War had its start on 360, which is I, one of Xbox's it, biggest franchises. So my like biggest memories of the Xbox 360 are like Lost Planet, I think. Lost Planet 2, which I don't mm. even think is an exclusive, but it's not on GameCube. And like I I remember going to my buddy's house and just playing that game all night. The multiplayer was so fun. It was a multiplayer campaign, I think, a co-op. Those those are good games. Yeah. And I also have to give a shout out to Skyrim on Xbox 360 because the game was like completely broken on PlayStation. Yeah. So 360 was like the sort of best way besides PC to play it. If you were going to play it on console, you were going to play it on Xbox 360. That was... Yeah. And the and Xbox 360 really gets points for being the it was it's the last time that Xbox didn't feel like a huge underdog to me. Like, yeah, Xbox I mean, was in that. In range. another universe, Xbox Microsoft continued their momentum from 360 and maybe is like number one or number two today. Yeah, like, but as we know, that didn't happen. But like, in in the 360 era, they were on top of the world. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is this is very tough. I'm going yeah. GameCube personally. The GameCube did have uh, p- the best Paper Mario game by a long shot. Oh my so god, I didn't even mention Thousand Year Door. Door. Yeah. We forgot oh, about Thousand Year Door. Also, Word. the Xbox th- game, my GameCube. Everybody who got a GameCube, it still works. I, I there are very few GameCubes that failed. My we GameCube forgot about Metroid works. Prime too. Yeah, Metroid Prime. Uh, Metroid Prime. Jesus. I prefer Metroid Prime One, but yeah. Uh... <laughs> Uh, no, Pikmin? but the Xbox 3, yeah, Pikmin. Pikmin was like a launch window game for the GameCube, which I didn't really learn to respect until recently, but it is... Did it, Animal Crossing also start on the GameCube? Animal Crossing... Yes, it did, in the, the US. In the US. In the uh, in Japan, it started on the N64. But since we're not Japanese and none of us imported the game, we're going to count it as a GameCube yeah, game. Man. I, I got okay, it. Okay, so... Yeah. I'm 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 gonna go on the record here because I think I know how you two are going to vote. These are both very close to me, but just for for memories and to just side with Xbox for once, I'm going to side. I'm going to put my vote in for 360. All right, I'm going GameCube. Yeah, I'm gonna go GameCube. All right, I, no disrespect to the 360. I no think, disrespect. It's super close. I the think 360 it, gave me memories. In a world where I got a 360, like, and was not excluded in middle school, I think 360 yeah. could have won this. But that's not the world we live in. But like, here's the thing. Like, I love the 360, but the GameCube is such an incredible console. Like, I don't feel chipped at all about this result. You know, like, yeah, it's like okay, one of two all-time great like goat consoles. We had to pick one, so, and that's just I, you know, all of these are. I mean, the vast yeah. majority. I mean, of a lot of these are, are incredible. I have very yeah. good memories. Yeah, um, a lot of these are just legendary. The PS One versus the Wii. We've we've talked about the PS One a little. Let's uh, the Wii gave us. I mean, the Wii came with possibly one of the best games it ever got. Wii, Wii Sports. Wii Sports. Wii, Wii Sports. Yeah, we got your comment. mom gaming. Like yeah. It was incredible for that, but then also Twilight Princess launch window shared shared with the GameCube. Um, you got Super Mario Galaxy, which is like, oh man, yeah. Super Mario Galaxy is the Wii game in my mind. Like when I think of the Wii, it is Wii Sports, it is Super Mario Galaxy. But Nintendo really fell. The Wii drove me yeah, to it, get a PS3 because the, the Wii, second half of that yeah. console generation was not good, but. Ah, it, th- this is hard for me, not because I like the PS1 and the Wii a lot. It's because the oh, Wii... Oh, it had Sky- Skyward Sword was on the Wii. Yeah, and, which makes it an auto-lose, right? But like, yeah, auto lose. <laughs> the Wii is like duality of man because they, they have Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2, but then they have Animal Crossing City Folk. And like, they have the the 
dawn of the Wii Shop, like the Wii Shop channel, the virtual console, like the dawn of all that, which is extremely important to me. I, that was the first time I played a lot of retro games, but then they made Skyward Sword. Like, yeah, it had so many good games, but there like, were also so many the, shovelware the Wii, garbage. The Wii was Nintendo at their most experimental, for better and for worse. I think. I yeah, there were high highs and low lows for the on the Wii. The Wii was trying too hard to attract a casual audience without respecting them. I I feel like like Skyward Sword. The the most the the feeling I remember most of playing Skyward Sword is that I am not being respected. This game is trying to hold my hand, and like even people that needed those tutorials, those tutorials are too boring. It didn't work for them, and that that is just like Nintendo's design ethos for the back half of the Wii, and, yeah. and for that reason, and, and also the Wii drove me away from nintendo like i was i did not get a wii u at launch because i just didn't care yeah. after the wii i bought a ps3 and i uh, you know eventually the in, PS3. In, in many ways like th- like while the wii was highly successful for nintendo it alienated their core in the same way the xbox one alienated the xbox core yes like they they alienated them and had to spend the next two generations winning them back and now obviously they're back in full force but you know that process took the better part of a decade where whereas i don't know in a different universe if they had not been as experiment experimental with the wii and stuck with their core might so have been a little different so, so just some some reason like link's crossbow training outsold like any core nintendo games on the wii pretty much like yeah i mean motion controls yeah. were were re- were yeah s- something no, incredible and like, and like we fit like so yeah we fit training actually didn't sell that much only i remember you guys remember red steel 2 i believe link's crossbow training outsold twilight princess i'm looking no it did not that's a wild fact okay. to me if that's true it's uh, not true it link's crossbow lot, training though. sold 5.7 twilight prince 7.4 is that including gamecube i believe galaxy 12.8 okay it bears mentioning that the effects of the Wii are still being felt today, right? Oh, like yeah. the, the Switch still has Wii-like motion controls. Well, I can't help but wonder if we, like, gyro aiming is the only reason I can stand to play a shooter on console these days. And I, I wonder if we ever get there without the Wii. Like, I think we do, but I, I think the Wii certainly accelerated things. But I got to give this to the PS1, I think. Like, yeah. The I don't PS1 have just bad... simply has too many legendary games. And, and I'm not angry at the PS1 for anything. And I'm angry at the Wii for so many things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, l- let's put it this way. The Wii has some of the greatest games of all time in uh, Mario Galaxy and Mario Galaxy 2. But the PS1 has maybe like 10 games in that same sort of bracket. Yeah. And it also, the Wii has, I want to say the Wii has backwards compatibility with GameCube as well. I don't want to give it, you know, we're not giving it Super Mario Sunshine, right. but that's nice. Like, if you're going out to buy a console, the Wii is cool. I also think the Wii is probably the best console to hack if you're going to buy one to mod, because, and this doesn't really go into the bracket, but it, it plugs into a CRT, mm-hmm. but it can also, like, be hacked to play so many retro emulators. And have the CRT and everything. I think that's very cool. Yeah. But I, I'm not giving it points for that. I say we give this to the PS1 and move on. I agree. Mike, I assume yeah, you agree. I, yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm on the PS1 train. I love the Wii. That's why we gave it a buy. But all right, this next one stings for oh, me. Man. But it's not, it's not terribly hard. Uh, the Nintendo Switch versus the Nintendo Entertainment System. Both are okay. revolutionary. Both are revolutionary because arguably both saved Nintendo. Like both <laughs> literally. L- both radically changed Nintendo's trajectory. Let's just put it that way. For the better. <laughs> For the yeah, better. For the better. Uh yeah. So I never owned an NES, like I told you many times on the show. My first console was an N64. But I've obviously played many NES games. And we already went over NES's sort of like legendary catalog, you know, Super Mario Bros, Metroid, The Legend of Zelda got its start here. The, uh, the Switch. That just being has said, a better version the, of all of those. Plus, you can play all of those on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, Nintendo Switch yeah. has virtual consoles for the NES, SNES, and Nintendo sixty four and Game Boy now. Uh, more games get added to those constantly. A lot of the NES games that I just mentioned are playable on Switch via the virtual console, and 
you could make the argument that a lot of Nintendo's franchises are having their series like are they are getting their, their serious peak, best game on the right Switch. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're I getting think Tears of the Kingdom. You're sure. getting Mario Odyssey. You're getting Bowser's Fury. You're getting You're getting Pikmin uh, 4, which we haven't talked about yet, but oh my god. <laughs> Pikmin 4, Metroid Dread. Like a lot of these games are just Nintendo firing on all cylinders. Granted, like this foundation started in the NES, but like they're sort of at their peak now in the Switch era, I feel like. Man, and they both had hardware issues too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They both have dubious hardware. Yeah. Which it's... is painful to say. The Joy-Con drift definitely detracts from the Switch. I hadn't really thought of that. The NES, I would argue, is more repairable than the Switch is. I didn't have to sit oh, my yeah. NES in to repair it. I just popped it open with a screwdriver and uh And just replaced the just cleaned the pins on it. Yeah. So. I, I I honestly I didn't even I threw it in a pot of boiling water for for I think an hour and it fixed my seventy two <laughs> pin connector. Yeah. Yeah. And it was easy as <laughs> you know, easy as could be. And I popped it back in and it, it every game starts first try now. And I, lo- I, this is a hot take. I love the NES controller. It feels terrible in your hands, but a D pad, an A and B, a select and start, there's just the simplicity of it is so yeah, nice. It's not much you need to play a game. The yeah. simplicity is nice, but like the ergonomics aren't great. The ergonomics are horrendous, yeah. The SNES made it, the ergonomics better for yes. the same general kind of. There is, there controller. are dog bone controllers for the NES. Uh, that are official and they're shaped like a SNES controller, but just with only two buttons. I I gotta give this to the Switch though. The Switch is just yeah, and I f- I feel like if anyone over the age of maybe like thirty five is listening to this, they're probably gonna shake their fists at us. But I have I'll to be the, the dissenting the voice. You're 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 really you're going NES. I'm going NES. There, there's a case for it, I think. There is a case for it. Yeah. There is just, very just much for, a case for historical NES. importance and like the simplicity and a lot of my favorite games of all time are NES. But a lot but more I, of my favorite games of all time are Switch, I think. Let's put it this way. Like I would be a lot more swayed if the NES virtual console wasn't on Switch. Granted, you can't play every NES game on there, but like a lot of the notable ones are available on on and the Switch. portability, like the Switch is such the Switch and is the a good des- yeah. like the, the Switch- portability is so huge. The Switch is my desert island console, I think, like, easily. Like, I don't know. Well, I, I'm going to give it Switch because we're in a two two to one on this. Yeah, I'm going to give it to Switch as well. Although, like, NES, obviously, one of the most respected consoles of all time. Have yeah. to put it respect on its name. Our next round, and this is hard. Well, no, this isn't that hard, but... uh. The Game Boy Advance versus the PS Vita. I love both of these platforms. The market did not. I, I, <laughs> I didn't love even them play both. A PS yeah. Vita. Uh, I love them both. I'm going Game Boy Advance. I, I'm I'm also going Game no Boy Advance, but I also have to shout. I have to shout out the Vita. Like the the biggest crime the Vita committed, and maybe this is a reason why contributed to why it wasn't so popular. But it's it's proprietary memory thing. Yeah. Not a great idea. Like Sony, what are you doing? And, it, and um, it just didn't get that many games like Gravity it, Rush. It didn't, you know, like it had uh, it had a really good Killzone game, Killzone Mercenaries. Uncharted, it had Uncharted Golden, Golden Abyss. Abyss. Yeah, pretty good. It had um, it had a Tearaway, which was made by Me- Media Molecule, which was a cute little game. It had a little big planet that is maybe my. It favorite had a little big, little planet. big planet. It 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 had some good games on it. But it and just the hardware wasn't, was neat. Like the back and the hardware screen. was neat. It just didn't have a system seller. That was the no. problem. And and one of my favorite games of all time was on there for exclusively for a while there. Uh, Persona Four Golden. Yeah, it is my favorite JRPG of all time. I think yeah. I can't think of one I like better. So PS Vita has some incredible games. Um, I still like breaking it out every once in a while. There is just something comfy about it to me. Uh, and it, you know, it was the first handheld to use an OLED screen as well, which, uh, gave it like this really nice, like depth of color compared to, you know, something like the the DS. But I mean, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance, you got Advance Wars, you have so many fond memories, insanely good Castlevania sequels, insanely good Pokemon games, insanely Uh, good, yeah, everything, insanely good tactics games, uh, this is Man. also like this was like this is you know I I being a kid that your parents are dragging around everywhere that's when the exactly. GBA hit for me the GBA was, I didn't get so a game many boy memories of just like 
us like my the family like going on vacation somewhere i'm just sitting in the back of the car with my game boy advance playing pokemon ruby yeah and enjoying every minute of it like yeah it's plus uh it, it, the game boy advance sp finally solves the backlight problem and I I'm and the gonna... sp like like it's so iconic like i mean name a more iconic handheld <laughs> no no when i think like, of a, when i think <laughs> of a portable gaming device the first thing that comes it's to the mind game is boy the game SP. boy advance yeah I think yeah, Game Boy Advance SP, yeah, like yep, perfect so form factor for a handheld. Yeah, hundred percent Game Boy Advance SP. All right, next up we yeah. have this is another hard one for me: the Nintendo DS versus the PlayStation Three. Neither of Whoa. these are from a particularly nostalgic time for me, but they uh, uh both of them are for me actually. But they're both like really good, like. I am constantly surprised by how many good games there were on the Nintendo DS because it is sort of in an uncanny time technology wise where like it could kind of do 3D, but it looks really bad. And some points have to be given for both of these consoles because in their earliest iterations, you could play Game Boy Advance games on the Nintendo DS. You could play PS1 and PS2 games on the PS3. So yeah, they both get very good for for backward compatibility. Both of these consoles. And both for being very goofy hardware wise. What do you mean? Uh, the PS3 PlayStation had the three cell. with its cell processor, and the oh, Nintendo yeah. DS having two screens. Yeah, on yeah. The handheld. The two screens on the DS. The DS like was... two screens was pretty. It it was a like nothing else did it right. Like, and that's another reason why like a lot of DS games are sort of trapped on there. Uh. And aren't like they were on like I would be very curious to see if Nintendo manages to do like a virtual DS on the Switch because I'm not sure how that's going to work. They had a they had a virtual DS on the Wii U. Isn't the Switch touchscreen really? The Switch is touchscreen. If you yeah, Yeah. but I meant like a dual screen. They they so there are DS games that have been ported to Switch. The Mega Man Zero collection has Mega Man ZX uh and zx advent and it just kind of has the bottom screen like smaller in the corner like it's it's not a very graceful solution yeah but yeah i mean i have so many fond memories of new, the ds super as well mario bros that name is like dirt to me now but when it came out it was the first 2d mario in a very long time and it was quite good it just the series got done to death super mario 64 ds the, just the idea that I could have that kind yeah, of game. That, that was handheld. pretty mind blowing at first. It, that that was the game that sold me. I mean, it, it was literally it was a launch title, but it was a system seller. My dad, my dad showed me. He was like, "Hey, a Nintendo came out with something new. It's called a dual screen." And I looked at it and I was like, "That looks stupid." And I didn't want one <laughs> as right, a kid. Yeah. And then my buddy Christian got one, and I saw him playing Super Mario sixty four, and it blew my mind. And I went home and begged my dad Plus, for one. I, I also want to highlight the social aspect of this handheld. Like there was like Picto Chat and like and, and uh, DS Download Play, DS Download Play, Mario Kart on DS. Like every, one person has the game, but you play with like fifteen people. It's like a pretty pretty incredible stuff. Yeah, a lot of I, fond memories with that. But then PS three had Uncharted, which is PS three like, PS three. Was the black sheep of PlayStation's history. PS3 had Metal Gear Solid 4, both P- Little Big Planets. PS3 there, is, there were four little big is an interesting generation because well, like it started off. The first half of the PS3 was not so hot. It's almost like the inverse, I feel like, of the Xbox One generation. The, oh, no, no, sorry. No, the not the inverse. The same, yeah. right? Because like the first half wasn't that hot. But then it just kept improving and kept improving. And I remember, right, like, there was a period of time where I had a 360 and a PS3, and my PS3 was just collecting dust. But then Uncharted Drake's Fortune came out, right? I still remember walking, and I I remember walking into GameStop as a kid, seeing Uncharted on the shelf, not knowing anything about it, but I saw the Naughty Dog logo, and I was like, oh, I like Jack and Daxter, can I get this game? And I got, got it, and it really just changed everything. Like, Uncharted 2 specifically, like, really changed what an action-adventure, story-driven game could be, and really started defining what Sony was from that point forward. Yeah. So, like, in the second half of the PlayStation's life cycle, you got these genre-defining exclusives. You got Uncharted 2, 3, The Last of Us. You got, like like Mike said, Metal Gear Solid 4, which I love, by the way. You got Little Big Planet. 
The that that was the two. one that sold me on the PS3. I I play I saw, I watched so many videos of people playing Little Big Planet waiting for Christmas because I was I was begging for a PS3. They really sort of just like it took a couple years, but they really freaking popped off. Also, like the game I think of with the PS3, it's a uh, Cake Princess. Such a weird uh, game. Fat, pr- fat Princess. Fat Princess. And that just like. That feels very PS3 to me, like that game specifically. And also, I I've got to mention Demon Souls. Oh, Demon Souls. Uh, Demon Souls. Dark Souls. With without Demon Souls, right? Like that was the start of like the From Software domination. Right. They had like, Infamous. Oh God, I forgot about Infamous. Infamous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Infamous Two by Sucker I, Punch. I think we give this to the PS3. I love the Nintendo DS. I love it dearly. I think it's a fantastic handheld. But I, uh, God, I want to highlight God of War three as God well. That was 3. an incredible exclusive for me. And a yes, little... I, I I agree with you, Connor. I love the DS, but I have to lean PlayStation on this one. It also had a game you might have never heard of, uh, Grand Theft Auto five. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, huge that game. PS three, yeah, that was PS three. It's huge game. <laughs> the game's a decade old and it's still getting I updates. Forget. Yeah, because I still like that game. Still looks good, honestly. Yeah, I think we give this PS three. All right, getting spicy here. Yeah, now right. we have the Nintendo 64 versus the 3DS. I don't know if this <laughs> is controversial. I go 3DS on this one. Yeah, I, I think 3DS. Really? I was going to say N64 on this. So the better version of both Zelda games on 3DS, the ports, you have Super Mario 3D Land, amazing. You can play Super Mario 64 through the DS port if you if you want to. It's not as good, but... You can. Um, you've got a Smash Bros. game on 3DS that is better than yeah, the original Smash Bros. game. You've got... It's portable. You've got the 3D, which, like, is is at least a neat novelty. Um, you've got an emulator for a Super NES. You've got an emulator for an NES. You've got... Um, I think you could do Game Boy Advance on the 3DS, although I don't know if that was ever available outside the Ambassador program. But you could... But, like, okay, so games. let me put it this way. What exclusives came to 3D... 3DS that had as much impact as the N64 exclusives. I mean, Super Mario Land, Super Mario 3D Land is huge. Um, it's huge, but like when you like compare it versus, you know, Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time. But it's it's but you can it's, play those games kind of a tough 3DS and better versions of them. I, I suppose yeah. that's true, but like, I, I, mean, I mean, how much credit do you want to give? playing an enhanced version versus like getting that experience in the first place you know i'm gonna get I guess um, that's a question I, we need to and you got luigi's mansion too with. you've got a, a drought of good mario games certainly of 2d mario you've got a lot of wii games getting ported to the 3ds you've got um yoshi's epic yarn is that what it's called you've got Kirby's mm-hmm. epic yarn. donkey yarn, kong country it? returns these are amazing games uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf, arguably the best Animal Crossing. Yeah. Um, uh, like the best versions of of Ocarina of Time is the 3DS version. Yeah, and you're gonna get the best experience, even if you want the original experience. Just play the 3DS port. Yeah, and I I've played every version <laughs> of uh, Ocarina of Time. Better. I played them all, and the 3DS one is by far like if I was recommending one to someone, I I I lean 3DS on this one. I lean 3ds. That's crazy, man. So, so N64, you had Donkey Kong 64, Diddy Kong Racing, F Zero, Mario Golf, Mario 64, Mario Party, Mario Tennis, Paper Mario, like also, Pokemon Stadium, Mario Kart Mario 7, 64, Majora's Mario Mask, Ocarina of Time, Yoshi Story. Like these are Yoshi Story sucks. Don't even don't even list that. One. Yoshi Story is a great game. Yoshi what are you Story about? is trash. I liked it. <laughs> it's nowhere near as good as Yoshi's Island. Like it well, is. It I is a... I also played it when I was like seven. So y- Yoshi's know. Story is just Yoshi's Island. Okay, though. forget Yoshi's Story. But like <laughs> the other games I mentioned, man, like those good. are insane. Yes, you've got Mario Kart Seven. You've got Smash Four. You've got Super Mario Land. Like you got you got Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D. You've got Monster Hunter Four. You've got Monster Hunter. Uh, yeah, a lot of Monster Hunter games really that were all extremely good. You've got Metroid Samus Returns. Yeah, insanely good. You've got Link some um, the the a Link to the Past sequel that everybody loves. Uh Link Between Worlds. Link Between Worlds. Thank yeah, you. that's a that's a good one. Yeah. Xenoblade yeah, 3D. Xenoblade, yeah. Yeah. 
there, yeah, great there's game. a Good lot game. to love mm-hmm. on the 3DS. I wish it got its own 3D Zelda. Like, I wish there was a, a an Ocarina of Time style original. Oh, game. Star Fox 64 got a remake. Yeah, it did. On 3DS. <laughs> The 3DS is a very good console. See, 3DS is great. I I just don't see a world where it's better than N64, but I'm outvoted here, so yeah. I'll concede. All right. Let's, let's pop that in. Oh, does that mean we moved to All the right, hard we're, rounds? All right. We're up to the third round in our top eight. Yeah. So we've got... And how long has it been? We've already been going for almost an hour. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's actually right. so not as bad as I thought it would be, because these yeah. are going to go quicker now. Uh, the well, rounds, not not the individual <laughs> rounds, but the the bra- you know, the brackets now. So in the e- final, each semifinals. one is going to be like a killer now. Like each of these matchups is going to cause me like actual pain. I so. don't know. The PS2 versus the Super NES is what we're on. Is that actually that painful? Uh, yeah, not really. No, for me, I I have a clear winner here. I love both consoles, but I I, I love think both the PS2 consoles edges dearly. out. I also think the PS2 wins this. I don't even need to bring out like my arguments for the PS2 for this one. It's just... have we have we actually made any arguments for PS2 no, I, yet? I feel like it's just been auto winning it's, well. it's one by just... so the PS2. Really, my the thing I'm thinking with PS2, it's it's a lot of multiplats really, but it was just the volume yeah. of them and the quality. it had everything. It had great multiplats and great exclusives. Yeah, it had. There was nothing bad about the the Ratchet and Clank games. We had Jack um, and Daxter. Jack and Daxter. God of War, Grand the Grand Theft Auto Three, right? some of the best Metal Gear Solid games. Yep, Three, yeah. Yeah. City, and Devil May Cry got its start on exclusives. PS2. And Devil May yeah. Cry is Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, so the Super NES is amazing, but the PS2, I don't know that I really believe that Sony's first party was doing it yet, but the PS2 was kind of where narrative like. Narrative started coming out of only Kingdom being Hearts. something in RPGs, really. Yeah. Nar- narrative right. became an important part of gaming on the PS2, I feel like. And that that matters a lot. Yeah, and you got the main entries of the Final Fantasy series for that entire generation were there. Yeah. A monster and also, Hunter. Jack, all the Jack and Daxter games, huge for me. Like they, A lot of big studios got their starts there. And also, like, everybody had one of these things. It's, yeah, yeah. Everybody. Really it, because, you know, DVD player, you know, that in itself was, like, an incredible functionality that wasn't even related to games that everyone used. So, I love the so, Super NES. It's painful to see it drop, yeah. but I think this is It's, it's hard. Done. But, you yeah. know, we're at the point where hard decisions have to be hard made. Hard decisions have to be made. All right. So, PS2 advancing, I think, End unanimously. Four. Yeah. Into the top four. Okay. GameCube versus PS1. I go GameCube here every day of the week. <sighs> I, I love the PS1. I, I love, love Spyro. The PS1, but... I love Crash. I hear Final Fantasy VII is good. Here's here's the thing. It's It should be tough on paper, but it's not tough for me. Like, I have to go GameCube here. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't argue for the PlayStation 1 that GameCube just is that. Had, had everything. It did. Yeah. All right. We're really going to have All right. a well, maybe this episode won't be too the long. finals. Uh, <laughs> the finals are going to be painful. Um, so, but it, it is, uh, so the last two were unanimous, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, Switch versus Game Boy Advance. Ooh. This one sucks. I go, I go Switch here. I go uh, Switch by merit of volume, I think. Just not volume, but variety of games you can play. Like, you can play Hades, but you can also play a fully 3D Mario Kart. And you can play, like tactical top-down games but also you can play like the batman arkham games like the switch pokemon just... emerald though pokemon emerald which is not available pokemon on switch Red. for some reason yep. yeah yeah uh you had the best pokemon game the game one boy advance is very nostalgic yeah it actually i mean okay so we we have to hash this one out right like we, we have, have to hash there's, there's enough so, percent so, here so, so okay so like Switch, incredible console. We've already said its merits, right? Well, but okay. So, so we need to talk a little bit more about Game Boy, right? The like, Game Boy Advance has good Pokemon games, and the Switch Emerald, does not. Fire Red, Leaf Green, yeah. Ruby, Sapphire. Like pocket. these are my favorite freaking Pokemon games. Also, you know? 2D Mario is showing on the Game Boy Advance. They ported all of the all of the 2D Marios to Game Boy Advance. Mega Man what? Battle Network. Oh yeah, backwards compatibility Huge. with Game yeah, Boy Color. Game Although you know we did get the Battle Network Connect collection on switch now so i guess that cancels out but yeah uh, yeah but it's originally game boy so i'm gonna give it to game boy yeah. advance yeah 
Um, the Game Boy Advance, the Link, Final the, Fantasy Tactics Advance. It was um, durable. There was no hardware issues. Castlevania was still getting new games on the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, yeah the Game Boy Advance is durable. Yeah, no hardware issues. Although you kind of had to get an SP eventually for that backlight. I mean, yeah, the SP. I, I'm when I think think of Game Boy Advance, I do just Mario think of and the Luigi SP. Superstar Saga. Insanely good. Yeah, yeah, back. Superstar Saga. The Game Boy Advance is hard hitting. I I agree. Yeah. It's it's this is a very tough one. Uh, did you guys play the Sonic Advance games? Yes, Those were fun too. Were, Sonic Advance were fun. Sonic Battle was fun. Sonic just not just like Sonic the Hedgehog Blizzard. remake. A lot Game of Boy good Advance. Sonic on the yeah one. yeah. And and the ch- and you know Zelda probably is the we like in terms of if we're comparing Zelda Switch wins easily because yeah, on Game Boy Advance Minish you had Cap. like four swords Minish Cap and you had a Link to the Past a, a remake of it. Right, but and you're you, comparing that to Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, it doesn't, and, it doesn't win out, yeah. And Link's Awakening, it's, it's yeah. It's, no, I mean, okay, so it, it, these these are punch... The fact that the GBA is even punching here is, like, admirable to me, but it, like... If also, you just shout compare, out to Yu Yu Hakusho Tournament Tactics, okay. one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games. But, like, if you just compare entries, like, Metroid Fusion versus Metroid Dread, obviously Dread beats it to death. You compare uh, Mario Kart Super Circuit to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe beats it to death. You compare yeah. Minish Cap to to Tears of the Kingdom and uh, Breath of the Wild. It gets beaten to death. The Switch just wins here. Like, and the Switch has a Game Boy Advance Virtual Console on it, it as does. well. Yeah, it's it, getting a lot. And all the Battle Network games are on Switch as well now. And that was a huge like plus for Game Boy for me for the longest time. But but, but I then guess. You- you can also plug the switch into a TV and pop the joy cons yeah. off or even not even plug it into a TV with one switch. You can play co-op and, and it's got rocket league on it. It's so tough. I think I have to go switch here, but it's very tough. Very what are tough. you thinking? Mike, I go switch here. So yeah, I, uh, as much as I love the game boy advance and as much as I don't like playing my switch all the time, I'd have to go switch. All right. All I am right. a Nintendo Switch hater, okay? PS3 3DS is tough. Um, PS3 3DS is tough, but I, I have whole, my answer. Why is this whole bracket just Nintendo's goofy technology versus Sony's goofy <laughs> technology? <laughs> like, I, the second time in a row. I think PS3 wins this, right? I think I think PS3 wins this for the previously aforementioned reasons. Yeah. yeah. I, I've talked about how much I love the 3DS. I... I still carry a 3DS on my backpack because uh, I, I I modded my 3DS and it's my favorite thing to put emulators on. I think the 3DS could give the Switch a run for its money, though. I do not. There's just too much. I mean, yeah. we'll talk about the Switch in a minute, but like Switch is just like, it's too big. Like it, yeah. it can do too much stuff. It can you can play old games, stuff. new yeah. games, indie games, AAA games. Like you can do so much stuff with it. But uh, so for this one, are we all in unanimous PS3? Yeah, PS3. Okay. It it really do just be Sony and Nintendo in the top four. I mean that that's you know that. Was I mean wild. okay. I I can see I could see a world where if this bracket was rearranged differently, 360 making it to the top four. I really could. Yeah, the 360 had the GameCube to compete against, so it kind yeah, of suffered it, it there. Suffered, I I could yeah. see if this I, I ba- see if this, this bracket was rearranged, or if we were doing this on a different date, I could absolutely see 360 making it to to the top four. So, oh man! All right, so we have our top four. Yeah, we so, have our top, top four. It's the PlayStation semifinals, two, the GameCube, P- yeah, the P- Nintendo Switch, and the PS3. So round one: PS2 versus GameCube fight. See, historically, this one was decided <laughs> a decade ago, but I go GameCube here. I I'm on Team PS2 largely because so much stuff came out on the PlayStation Two, and there's so much experimental oh, titles. You- I hate you to jerks. do this. You I jerks go, are going to make me choose, aren't I, you? I go GameCube had... because it's the one I had. Like, I I replay Super Mario Sunshine once a year. I love that game so much. We I had Katamari Damacy. So much experimental stuff came out in the PlayStation 2. Same on the GameCube, though. We had Pikmin. Like, we had Luigi's Mansion, which is, like, a All weird... Right, I'm, like... Gonna, I'm, I'm now going to hear arguments from you, too. Yeah. Because okay. uh, I, I'm, I'm legitimately 2. conflicted here. Had Ace Combat. It had Jack and Daxter. Naughty Dog got their start in narratives here. Devil May Cry. Don't Devil, like, May, Devil May, Cry. May Cry. I don't want to argue for you. But. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had Persona Three. Persona. 
God and four. And four. And four. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Persona three and four happened on uh, PlayStation. Final Fantasy II. ten. Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. God of War Sly one. Cooper. God of War two. Metal Gear Solid two and three. Y'all got like Star Wars first. Ratchet and Clank, Lego Star Wars. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's so much. Okay, so okay, but GameCube, Pikmin and Pikmin Two. I know you haven't. Pl- I know you guys haven't played them. It's insanely high quality games. Like just Miyamoto when when they were making Pikmin One and Two, Miyamoto said he wanted them to be the next Mario. Like that is how much love there was for these games. Um. You got Super Mario Sunshine, which is a little controversial, but like like I said, I, I'm playing that game once a year. You have Luigi's Mansion, which it just such a weird little game, a, a launch title that kind of replaced a Mario game, and it's like a weird, like almost Resident Evil style Luigi ghost catching game. You've got Star yeah. Fox Adventure, which I know Amid loves. You got Super <laughs> Smash Brothers. Me. Super Smash uh, Brothers yeah. Melee. Melee. You've got The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. You've got Metroid Prime 1 and 2. You have the Game Boy Advance player, which could play the entire Game Boy Advance catalog. You have a, This could play the entire PlayStation 1 catalog. That's true. You have a remake of Ocarina of Time, for what it's worth, um, with Master Quest. You have a lot of good games on the game. You have Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and Sonic Adventure DX. <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, just Tekken 5. Ooh, Final Soul Fantasy. Calibur 4. Third, With Link. 12? Yeah. Grand Theft Auto, Gran Turismo. <sighs> they're both. They're both. You had the first two Kingdom Hearts, which were probably, I don't know. They were good. I didn't play. I only played one. You have The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures. Yeah. You had iToy. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. Okay. Oh. All right. So I, I I have I have a decision. Really? Yeah. I think I It's it's very tough. It's very tough. This is the first one where I I do not know which one you're going to choose. This is actually yeah, extremely I'm suspenseful. Fi- the for anticipation's me. hurting. It's very tough, but I'm going to choose the GameCube. Let's go! Oh my god. <laughs> I just... It's... Uh, 11 million people. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were all wrong. Game 55 <laughs> million people think you are wrong. GameCube whips! No, I... Okay, so when I was seeding this, in my mind, it was... um, It was PS2 versus Switch in the finals. I'm really yeah, surprised I GameCube was... made it this far. <laughs> so let's just make the game... I'm gonna let the GameCube win this one. <laughs> So uh, okay okay hold up hold up so I it was it it was an extremely tough decision but like when I lined up the exclusives like obviously both systems had exclusives that you know define my taste in gaming but I think the GameCube just had slightly more so I went with GameCube for me personally Pokemon Coliseum um all right so last round of the semifinals. Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Switch versus the PlayStation 3. This is actually tough for me as well. It's not tough for me at all. It's it's the Nintendo Switch. Mike, what do you think? Uh, I'm like, I'm a PlayStation 3 enjoyer, but <laughs> largely because it was my first online gaming experience. And honestly, oh. it probably had some of the best netcode that the Switch PS3, never has. Yeah, PS3. Like, I could play uh, online generation. and not have to worry about the, the game dying. You could play online. It had all of those great Sony exclusives, like Infamous, Resistance, yeah. Metal Gear Solid 4. <sighs> Let's but switch. Breath Little of the Big Wild. Planet. That code. Breath of the Wild was on Wii U, too. Tears of the Kingdom, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tears of the King. Yeah, that's like really Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But like, you know, you've got Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3. That's, like, that's true. That is. Last well, of Us. If I hadn't been thinking about Persona this all day. Persona 5. Already, it's too, it's, yeah, it's so tough. And plus, I do want to highlight this. For the first chunk of the PlayStation 3 generation, it was backwards compatible with PS2 and PS1. And for yep. the first chunk of the Switches, it wasn't backwards compatible with anything. Well, with anything. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it's so, still not real. You have to pay yeah, for you, Nintendo Online to get emulators. So, and it's not every game. Nintendo's online sucks, too. To switch. I mean, there and are there, exceptions. Netflix Mario Kart is fun. Sucks. All right. So I think... So, Mike, you keep thinking. I am going to vote for the PlayStation 3 here. 
Yeah, I, I am so going Mike... to go for the PlayStation 3. Oh, really? okay. Boy, we'll upset the Switch. You're going to upset the Switch. <laughs> I'm going to upset just... the Switch. We'll put Switch okay, so l- 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 in l- 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 I, I, I have to like defend this a little bit, right? Because the Switch, in terms of like modern consoles, like it is the one to be. Like It's got so many features. But the PlayStation, for my taste in gaming, the PlayStation 3 really kicked off what the kind of video games I enjoy the most. And for that, I have to give it a lot of props. Plus the fact that it has backwards compatibility, compatibility with the two and the one. That that has Switch, a lot of points in its Switch favor. Which is just diversity of games. The Hades, the the Stardew Valley, the... The Zelda, it, it, it is. The it Metroid is everything. Said. The Switch is yeah, everything. The the Switch Switch is everything, but the PlayStation 3 was Sony at their most experimental. Yeah. And that led to some of their most interesting games. Like, do, you think a, the... do you think a PlayStation 5 era Sony would have come up with something like Little Big Planet? I really don't think no, so. No, it would have been super derivative, but Little Big Planet was super experimental. PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 Sony were was Sony at its most like experimental and we're gonna just try and release good games this was a painful this was this may have been a more painful time to get outvoted than when we did the mario bracket (laughs) (laughs) what what, what, would we kill in the mario and also i I want to highlight Uh, and connor like i want to make this a little easier for you remember police playstation 3 had an exclusive called neiman souls it did that put from software on the map you know so yeah, that did. that ha- you have to respect that as well. Oh, but, my, but this puts I me for- in a situation. So, so let me just tell you, we are now in a finals between the GameCube and the PlayStation Three, and I yeah. do not believe either of these are the best console of all time. Yeah, and that that is the oh. painful part of these brackets. Like, I mean, I, I could make an argument for either of those two being the best. All the PlayStation consoles up until the 360 gen. I think the GameCube, like. The GameCube is the best. Nintendo wait, wait, console. hold on. So uh, we're moving on, right, to the finals? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. The PS3 okay, won. Okay. We we're in the finals. It's GameCube versus PS3. But I just want to talk about this for a second because, like, yeah. the GameCube doesn't beat the Switch for me, like, for sure. I and I I just I don't think the PS3 beats the PS4 for me. Like, that's just the weird way these brackets are. Like, yeah. I it it's just a strange way to do this. That that is very entertaining. Yeah, I mean, like I, I, I said this earlier, but like if we do this on a different day, rearrange the bracket, we'll probably have a different winner. But or, like, or if we were doing it in a different format, like a tier list or yeah. something. I think this looks extremely different as a tier list, although it, I, I think it, it has but, mostly A's for the tier list. Yeah, I mean, like it's like that's that's the tough thing. Like the majority of the things on this list you could make a case for. Yeah. Like that's just. Speaking to the quality of these consoles, can I can I say the weirdest thing? I feel do like it. the PS3 is about to take it home, and I do not <laughs> think it deserves it. Like, do you, we'll, we'll do uh, a third place vote. Like, so okay, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. I because I really don't know. Like between PS3 and GameCube, like, it, remember it, when I said earlier in the show that like if I had a gun to my head and I had to pick one console, it'd be the GameCube. Yeah, and. So- so the thing you know you now said, I have to seriously consider that all the stuff about it being experimental and everything to me that is valid against the PS against the GameCube because the GameCube was not like Pikmin was experimental and Luigi's Mansion but overall it was largely just extremely strong iteration yeah whereas I think in the battle against the Switch the Switch is Nintendo at its most creative and most experimental and like in a good way and most experimental without making the Wii and the Wii U <laughs> like okay so I hear you so, but Wind Waker Wind Waker is uh, Wind good. Waker wasn't well received that's the uh, thing I, I don't it was well received to me it was well received to me yeah. Too. Yeah, I love that game I would just uh, sail around while I ate mac and cheese sometimes I'd just be hitting the high seas for some also time. okay so we have to talk about everything right because yeah, this is everything. the finals Let's compare controllers, right? GameCube controller, probably still one of my favorite controllers of all time. Missing, missing this, yeah. PS3 controller kind of sucks. <laughs> okay, but just saying, the PS3 controller is not limiting to the sort of game you can play in the way that the GameCube controller is. The GameCube controller yeah. it doesn't have stick clicks. It doesn't have as many shoulder buttons. It's its button layout is weird enough. It is weird. 
that it, it, it influences game design in a way. Like the PS3 controller, you can plug it into your computer and play any game with it. I yeah. know I, we're not talking about PC, but right, right, right. the GameCube controller, I would only plug into my computer to play a few games. And I, I have been known to do both of those things. Yeah. So. The, the the controller, like button wise is weird, but ergonomics wise, I think is like really, really It is good. immaculate. Yeah. And like really love how the the shoulder buttons click on yeah. the GameCube, and that they're analog. I don't know. I think the PS3 um, are analog as well. I don't. The know. six, P, the PlayStation Three controller was originally the six axis controller, and it it had gyro controls. Yes, which um, I like. So that that's worth mentioning. Um, also, wireless controllers that the game wireless the controllers GameCube had yes. them, but they were not. Great. They were not. Uh, official right I, I think the wavebird ones might have been official i don't know because there's a there's a wavebird controller i believe in pikmin 4 there's a wireless gamecube controller you can mm-hmm. find which makes me think it was official but i'm not certain yeah I, so this this this, this is, is really hard for me this is the one i don't know which one to pick i yeah this is the gamecube is near and dear this is to very my difficult heart. they're both near and dear to my heart like so near and dear to my heart uh, Mike, you haven't really said much. What are you What are you thinking right now uh, for the PS3 versus GameCube? Yeah, I have a lot more interesting memories of PS3 than I do of GameCube. Like the PS3 still serves as one of my favorite consoles of all time, and I I can't say that about the GameCube because I don't really think about a lot of GameCube games anymore. See, I. <sighs> the, the weird one for me, like just just to throw this throw this in the ring for me personally, my GameCube is plugged in right now. My PS3 is not. I play my GameCube still, like at least once a year. I'm still firing that bad boy up. See that? Yeah, I don't know. Like it's really hard for like because like I don't play either, you know. And yeah, I do look at these consoles more fondly than you know my current gen consoles but that's just the way it works right like you pl- you have the newest thing plugged in see i i um, don't know i do not look at either of these more fondly than the switch like okay so we have to okay i think we've already done this a couple times but once again we have to go through the exclusives because like at the end of the day the games are where this battle is won and it's also it's these more than anything that we've done so far i feel like these are apples and oranges because gamecube GameCube and PS3 both have they're, a style uh, yeah. of game that are not similar at all. They're not similar at all, but we have to sort of synthesize these games and come up with what's better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So on the PlayStation side, and this is these are just like random lists, so I might have like I might be missing something. But on the PlayStation side, we've got Little Big Planet, we've got Metal Gear Solid 4, we've got Metal Gear Solid Collection, we've got uh Eco and Shadow of the Colossus collection, Little Big Planet 2, a God of War collection, Kill Zone 2, Demon Souls, Ratchet and Clank, Future Tools of Destruction, Resistance 2, Resistance 3, Resistance. What are uh, what, Ratch- what's Resistance? Insomniac's uh, first person shooter on PlayStation. Yeah, oh, you don't know one of the one of my names. favorite are you first serious? person shooters. I've never heard of them. No. No, they were they were really big honor, in the uh, PS3 era. Not honor, but uh Resistance 1 through 3 were all on the entire series lived and died on the PlayStation 3. Yeah, and it was Insomniac's like only M-rated series. That's not really I've never good. heard of this and I love Insomniac. That's wild that I didn't know about Yeah. It. I feel like we're due for a revival of those games at I some think, point, yeah. but Killzone was really good too. Yeah, so Killzone 2 was on PS3 and 3. Uh Let's see what else. The Sly Cooper collection, Infamous from Sucker Punch, which I still feel like I wish they would make more infamous, infamous games because they weren't masterpieces by any stretch of the imagination, but they were super fun to play. God of War collection, uh, Kill Zone Three, Gran Turismo Five, Ratchet and Clank collection, Infamous Two, uh, a lot of other games, Gran Turismo Six, uh, God of War Ascension, which was kind of bad. Uh, Puppeteer, which was a really unique platformer. Uh, Fat Princess, Heavenly Sword. Let's see. Any other? Uh, oh my god. Um, Starhawk. What was, what? what was the, do you guys remember, um, the prequel to Star, Starhawk? I don't Warhawk? know what Starhawk Warhawk, is. Warhawk, Warhawk. That's what it was. Yeah. I remember Warhawk. That was super fun. It wasn't perfect, but like. I have never heard of that game, but it was like a third-person cool. shooter, an online-only third-person shooter. Warhawk and Starhawk. Did you say Mod Nation Racers? Is that on here? 
on PS3. It was really good. My, oh yeah, Mod Nation Racers, PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. That game sucks. Yeah, that um, game did suck. The weird, weird shout out to Transformers War for Cybertron. Love that game. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Have I, yeah. If I've missed anything, please uh, chime I in, guys. I don't think you said The Last of Us. Oh, I don't think I did. Did I? Yeah, The Last of Us, <laughs> Uncharted, also, two, like, one, this, two, and three. Because this is against Nintendo, we can just say Call of Duty in general because the GameCube didn't get any of those, I don't think. Yeah, Call of Duty 4, huge at the time, obviously. <sighs> and obviously, we have to consider, you know, PS2, PS1, like, uh, yeah. you could play those on PS3. And, like, the meaningful multiplats, like like Call of Duty, like uh, Assassin's Creed, like, Nintendo was Assassin's not- Creed, yeah. yeah. Like, this was a, really an era where a lot of third parties popped off. Like, uh, Assassin's Creed 1, 2, Brotherhood, like, all of those are in this era right here. And and, and free uh, online multiplayer on the PS3. Eventually, yeah, fr- yeah, that's a huge, huge point as well. Uh, PlayStation had free online multiplayer during the PS3 era. It only started being paid for PS4. Um, also want to shout out Dragon Age Origins, Bioware, Mass Effect, right? Like, Mass Effect eventually came to PlayStation 3. Um, Mass Effect 2 and 3 came to PS3 actually before Mass Effect 1, so like the release order kind of got boned there, but yeah, all these third parties definitely, definitely need to think about those as well. Now do it for GameCube. Now do it for GameCube. All right, so GameCube. Let's think about GameCube here. So we've got Animal Crossing. We've got Custom Robo. Oh my god. Did you guys ever play Custom Robo? I I loved Custom Robo. Custom Robo was one of my favorite it's games. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, F-Zero GX, Harvest Moon, Legend of Zelda, Four Swords, Ocarina of Time Master Quest, um, Wind Waker. Remember that collector's edition thing that came out? It had like a demo of the Wind Waker on it. It also had like... Yeah, my buddy had that. Yeah. Yeah. it was. It's like super rare now, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? Uh, Luigi's Mansion. Uh, Mario Kart Double Dash, Mario Golf, Toadstool Tour, Mario Party 4, Mario Party 5, Mario Party 6, Mario Party 7, Mario Power Tennis, Mario Superstar Baseball, uh, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, Metroid Prime, Metroid Prime 2, Echoes, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, Pikmin, Pikmin 2. Goaded. Pokemon Coliseum. Oh, and my God, Pokemon Coliseum is also goaded. I loved Pokemon Coliseum. Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, Resident Evil 4, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. <laughs> this is impossible, man. Sonic Adventure DX as well. Um, Star Fox Assault, Star Fox Adventures. Both Star Fox games I played the crap out of. Super Mario Strikers, which is, I think, where like Mario Soccer started on GameCube. I'm pretty sure Star- Strikers started on GameCube. Super yeah. Mario Sunshine, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Wario World. Oh my god, that game is weird. <laughs> Guys, this is too this is too difficult. Man. So you missed Sonic Adventure 2 as well. No, I, I said Sonic Adventure oh, 2. Oh, I missed it. Okay. But yeah. um let me let me tell you where I'm at right now. Yeah. If I was gonna sit down right now and I had to pick one of these two platforms to play, it's GameCube. GameCube is I, I had more fun with it, I think, overall. I just love those Nintendo exclusives. They're extremely fun. However, if I'm thinking about games as far as um, their influence on modern gaming, I, I would I would be leaning towards PS3 because yeah, PS3 did a lot for PS, modern gaming. PS3 so I don't, was the dawn of mo- like PS3 is the first one I think of like this is modern gaming. So okay, so the thing that I'm really thinking about right now, I'm not making a decision right now, but the thing I'm really thinking about right now. Is the third par- party presence on PS3? Yeah, like we it, it have matters. to think about that. It matters a lot. Yeah. If I if I was gonna say like, this is if you're only ever gonna buy one console, PS3 gives you a better cross section of gaming. Yeah. And plus, some games I didn't mention, uh, God of War three and Persona five. <laughs> yeah, oh we're on God. PS3. I I'm very I'm very split on this. But I, yeah, I'm cube. I'm incredibly sw- split on this. What what are you thinking, Mike? All right, so I think I'm, uh, I'm PS3. Honestly, I I really loved the PS3 generation and everything that it had on it. 
I have very fond memories, even up into college, playing my PlayStation 3. I I think I can see this to PS3 just because it just it was such a good fight. But I I think if I'm picking an ultimate console, if I'm picking my favorite console, GameCube is going to win. If I'm picking an ultimate console, which I, I think we are, PS3 is it's not that for me. It's still the Switch, but I think PS3 is close. I don't know. I, th- I think like, let me be real here. I think our personal tastes have to matter a lot, right? Yeah, like, they do. But my personal tastes are very, very split down the middle on this one. I feel like, yeah. I feel like everybody got crucially outvoted this, this entire bracket. Yeah. Yeah. At some point. I mean, yeah. that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Yeah. I... Okay. It, it, it feels wrong. I, I let me be real. It feels wrong picking either of these. <laughs> yes, it does. It feels very. It, wrong. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go with PlayStation Three. All right. So, do we want the third place PlayStation Two versus Switch vote? I I think I do want to do that. Well, okay. I don't I don't think I want to do that because we we have our bracket. I just want I want all three of us to pick what our ultimate console is. Oh so, come on, man! Just just individually. Really? Because mine is obviously Switch. I've chosen. <laughs> Mine's the PlayStation Two. Do you? Would have you one? be mad? <laughs> Would you be mad if I said GameCube right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'd uh, be very mad. Yeah, uh, I, it's so just... tough, man. It's so tough. Um, my oh ultimate my console. So we were. So basically, this was. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. So okay. So okay. Let me. Be, let me. I, you know, that was only half joking. Like, I might yeah, honestly I know, still go game. But, like, okay, so I guess uh, I'll have to go with PlayStation 4 here simply because you can play pretty much every PS3 game on PS4, not That's through, cool. like, backwards compatibility, but because of, like, remastered ports and stuff, as well as, like, the immense third-party and indie presence on, P- uh, on PS4. See, that, so that's I'm a very a- similar reason I pick Switch. I pick Switch just that's- because it's so approach. Like, if I'm getting someone new into gaming, I hand them a Nintendo Switch every day of the week. That's that's why I kind of view the PS2, because it had a lot of third parties on it. All right, so final results. The Game Talk best console of all time is the PlayStation 3. <laughs> PlayStation 3. And nobody's happy about it. <laughs> no one's happy about it. <laughs> That's that's perfect. That's the perfect representation right. of this well, entire podcast. <laughs> All right. I honestly have no idea how we got here, but we yeah, got here we somehow. Get here. What happened? That's hilarious. What wrong. <laughs> that is so we funny. We, we got here because you all voted for the PS3 over the Switch, and y'all are wrong. We were all convinced that the PlayStation 3 was gonna like lose out. No, I was when I came up with this. Like when I, I texted you all early today that I I wanted to do this bracket. In my mind, the conversation I really wanted to have was the PS2 versus the Switch. The rest of it was just to make an episode out of. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. And, and neither of them made it to the finals. <laughs> I, sh- yeah. I didn't put them, I put them on opposite ends of the brackets so that they wouldn't meet until the finals. Yeah, and then the PS2 and GameCube met each other. So I think mm. one thing that would be fun, because this episode isn't going to come out for several weeks just due to the nature of our backlog. We should stick this bracket into our Discord and like see what uh yeah some of our uh listeners want to do with this. <laughs> yes. They're gonna be so confused. What and then like the yeah, oh, have like them, a blank like, bracket compare. for them to yeah uh, yeah yeah you just stick the stick the like the starter yeah, one. I love that in there. Uh, but yeah, why wild result? I it I, felt like a I feel I feel like this is the I feel like coming out of a fever dream right now. Like I, feel like I don't know how we came moment. to this decision. And like but, us as a podcast, this is our joke. Moment. Yeah, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is us acknowledging our inability to produce accurate. Like <laughs> this is it. This is this is the shark. We have it'll never go be better than this. Been a nice right. hundred some episodes. PS3 best console of all time. Yeah, I guess. So. Uh, I'll have to did plug we ever? In. We've done episodes on like we've done like episodes where we rank. Um exclusives on certain consoles right i think we did one for the ps3 right i don't think so i don't think we've done that i think we did hold up i need to check this right now and i'll just cut this out because like i have to know okay i don't think we've done that because i i was actually thinking about suggesting we just do like do a gamecube episode do a ps2 episode oh i'd be down so down for a PS2 oh yeah yeah I'm, I'm down for that as well i thought we did what we did it for one of the consoles was it gamecube I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, we did. So, 
episode 55, the GameCube greats. We each go through our top five GameCube games. I'm going to have to listen to that. I don't remember that at all. What was that? Four years ago? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. This 55? was three years ago. <laughs> three. Um, July 7th, 2020. Okay. So yeah, pretty much so three years dumb. ago. That was that was out of hiatus, wasn't it? Uh, no, we we were still in um in lockdown. Oh, yeah, that, out that of was our hiatus, yes. Out of our out. like two year yeah. hiatus. Yeah, we were out. No, of- we, our hiatus was one year, by the way. Yeah, but uh, I thought we did a PS3 episode. Yes, we did. We also did a PS3 <laughs> one. That's so funny. There you go. How long we did uh, episode seventy four, the pinnacle PS3 titles. We go through our top f- five PS3 games. So, so maybe this was destined to happen. Yeah, no, okay. maybe there's something to this. Maybe there's something <laughs> deep inside of us that led us to this result. I didn't even know this. What, what do you mean? That's kind of crazy. Okay. That's fun. God, I hate this. All right, we want to get back to it and do games we've been playing. Yep, let's uh, let's do it. Yeah, Um. I, I mean, I would love to go first for games we've been playing because I have nearly 100%ed Pikmin 4. How long did it take you? Uh, I am probably approaching 30 hours. That's a meaty. It's a meaty game. So I will say, so Pikmin uh, Pikmin 4, I'm going to spoil a very small amount of it for you, like no story spoilers or anything, but just a kind of structure. So so some of my beef with Pikmin 3 is that it was a little linear and it kind of held your hand. And I'm happy to say that Pikmin 4 is not linear. Pikmin 4 very much like it opens up and it's just collect all these treasures, have fun, collect, save, rescue all of these people who are stranded. And it's some of the best Pikmin has ever felt. But I got, and I I remember saying last episode, I said Pikmin 4 is a game of the year contender. And I got to the finale about seven hours in, I think. It was less than 10 hours. I got to the credits rolling and I said, okay, that's that was really good. But it was it was a good seven hours. That is not game of the year material. And I kind of like buckled in to finish up the hundred percent to really kind of get my thoughts. And then the game continued for twenty three hours after that. That's wild. The majority of this game is after the credits roll. And I I was complaining to you, Amid, that this game wears kitty gloves with you. It once it, it lets it lets everybody get to the credits rolling and then it takes the kitty gloves off and this game it's not like wow. hard hard but it it is pikmin 1 pikmin 2 hard maybe harder than that in a few places and just i saw that did you see that quote from miyamoto uh where he's just like i don't really understand why pikmin doesn't sell more oh yeah no i mean i told you like this dude thought pikmin was going to be the next mario like when he was yeah. making, and then they, when they were working on Pikmin 3, he said, it feels like the Wii U is purpose-built for Pikmin. And like the, he, he was part of making the Wii U, so it probably was, because he loves Pikmin. But, but Pikmin 4 is the best, like, if you were only going to play one Pikmin game, I would have said Pikmin 2 previously. Now I'm saying Pikmin 4. It, it, has, it has something for every Pikmin fan. I don't know if I would say it has something for everyone. But, like... It it has a mode that has the time limit from Pikmin 1, which is something the fans have bit missed dearly. It has difficult challenges. The game historically has a challenge mode that is separate from the story. And I think something Pikmin 4 does that is brilliant to get me to actually play challenge mode is that it kind of just hides those challenges in caves instead of making them a separate mode. So now they're just part of the story for me and I'll actually play them and enjoy them. It... It Ochi is just a a remarkable addition. I thought it was going to be kind of lame, but Ochi is the dog you have with you. Ochi, mm-hmm. I do think he's overpowered in some instances, but the game is balanced around him, so it just kind of ends up being fine. And I I love this game. I I will be 100%ing it. I will say the the only thing the night expeditions are kind of disappointing. Uh which are, which are our first in the series if you know enough about Pikmin that you know that like you can't stay on the planet at night. You have to go into orbit because the nocturnal creatures come out and it's too dangerous. Pikmin 4 is the first game to let you stay on the planet at night. And uh, that is actually kind of disappointing. Like you're expecting it to be this like really difficult thing and it's it's not at all. And you have to do it a lot. But I, I haven't done it. I That's actually probably the meat of the game that I have left. I have like 14 of those left to do or something. It's a lot. So you're still, yeah, that's, I thought you... 
You said almost 100%. So I have I almost 100%. Like I have almost found every treasure and rescued every person. I have not done all the night missions. I have like one area left, which is probably, it's probably two in-game days tops for me to get 200%, like all treasures, all rescues. And an in-game day is like, I think it's only 15 minutes, but it, when you go into caves, time passes slower. So that's that's probably an hour, two hours of content left there, plus quite a while on those uh night night expeditions i wish this game had online dandori battles like i really wish that because the, the dandori battles are essentially like a multiplayer mode where there are two two players and you are trying to gather treasure and certain treasures are worth more so you go after those and you can also go over and like mess up the opponent's plan and there are like chaotic like mario kart style items and uh, every once in a while, like a super valuable item will appear in the middle and you everybody goes for it. Or there is a bomb that can appear and you take it to the enemy's base to steal their points. It's a really creative mode that I will most likely never get an opportunity to play with another human being. And that is very disappointing. But I, I love this game. It is a contender for game of the year against Tears of the Kingdom for me right now. I, I want to sit on it a while. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know how I'm going to feel in a few months. Because it didn't have... It didn't have me grinning ear to ear as many times as Tears of the Kingdom did with its like big bombastic moments and stuff, but the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is just so tight in Pikmin 4. I really hope that this game does well. I really want to... Yeah, I've I've heard chance. superb things about it. I, I mean, you are one of the people I, I most want to play at Ambit, because I, I, think, I think... I'll play it and I'll love it. I, 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 I already know I'll enjoy it. It, it's a hole in it, it is i think pikmin is just such a hole in most people's gaming history like nintendo history and that's a shame okay i mean it was in mine i had played pikmin one and two but i didn't beat them until recently and it just and and if you are a lapsed pikmin fan pikmin 4 in many ways feels like a pikmin 2 sequel more than a pikmin 3 sequel it, it really it has the caves it has the open-endedness it, it has the danger once you get to it and it it's it's not terribly punishing either because Pikmin 2 also had this. You can restart on a floor of a cave you're on. So even if you get like absolutely bodied, you, you can undo that and get another chance. But it, it will feel bad. <laughs> How is the difficulty? The difficulty up well, through the first time credits roll, you will not lose very many Pikmin most likely. I, I, I hear like me, me, like I think, I don't know if it's just like you are used to these games, Connor, but like I hear these games are hard. Pikmin From 1 like and 2 are people. hard. Pikmin 3 is yeah. not hard. Pikmin 4 has hard parts. There there is a there are a few caves that are very hard before the credits roll. But by and large until the first credits they're not difficult and then it immediately turns up the difficulty a lot in some places and a decent amount in others. Uh a, to to a satisfying level in some places and to to like the point I actually had to spend like an hour repeating a challenge over and over in others. Like, wow! That there's like a a challenge, like a ten floor challenge cave that you unlock after the first time you roll the credits, and that actually it's it's a little later than that actually, and that that the first floor that took me almost an hour to do, and it's a five minute challenge. It just it, it was the timing is so tight. I I was not a Dundori master yet, and now I am. It's a good game. It's a really good game. And it, I want it to do well because I don't want to wait 10 years for Pikmin 5. I would love to get Pikmin 5 this decade. <laughs> uh, Man, yeah, like 2023 is just, we, we keep saying it, but it's, 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 it's another one of those years. It's an all-timer. It's an all-timer. It's a 2017 level year for sure. Maybe it higher. Is. Maybe higher, honestly. Yeah, at the end of the year, we'll have it's to like, nuts look back. To me. We have Super Mario Bros. Wonder yet to come. Like, there is a real possibility where my yeah. three biggest game of the year contenders are all Nintendo games this year. Nintendo is... And this is another reason I've been thinking about the Switch being, like, the best console of all time is because Nintendo is just absolutely pumping out just just pure quality. Like, yeah. just yeah, reviving are. franchises that have been sleeping for ages and giving them their best game yet. Yeah, and I mean, like, we still have Armored Core and Starfield on the horizon, too. Oh, my God, yeah. So, Armored <laughs> Core is not that far away, right? That's yeah, August. That, I've got that, like, locked. In, I've pre-ordered it. There's a good I'm chance just... that's out before this episode comes out. <laughs> it will definitely be out before this episode <laughs> comes out. We have, like, five episodes in our backlog. Ugh, painful. Um, 
Man, yeah. But one day I will play Pikmin 1, 2, 3, and 4. I want to play through the whole series. Just start on 4. I, I do Are you not, sure? I, like, will I want to go back and play 1 and 2 after 4? Yes. I think so. I, I still have an urge. I still have an urge to replay Pikmin 1. I I just don't think. Is it, but is it going to be the, one of those things where like I play four and then I play one and like half the mechanics I'm are gone and it's just like a very stripped down version of four. It it is stripped down. I don't think it's going to be as painful as you think. I mean, yeah, that I don't think it's painful. Like it, they're different games. Like like for instance, Pikmin Four adds a lock on, and the lock on is is a quality of life thing. That a lot of people would call an improvement, but it also, like, it takes away an entire level of skill, whereas in Pikmin 1 and 2, you actually have to aim your Pikmin, and in Pikmin 4, they lock on, and so, like, you don't really have to aim at what you're throwing them at, and that alone makes them vastly different games to me. And Ochi, Ochi, like, makes things so much easier. Just, like, Ochi, you can be, you can upgrade him to have the strength of 100 Pikmin and have him carry something, and, you know, you just don't have stuff like that in Pikmin 1 and 2, so you have that added challenge. But they're also just not terribly long games. Pikmin one's like six hours long. And I don't. I do think it might be hard to go back to three after four. But I, I don't even know if I would tell yeah. you. I need to. Also, narrative. I might, I might just. I mean, like, there's too much stuff to play. I might just say, like, b- like bite the bullet and I, play four. I think you should because I know? just don't think you'll ever get to one and two. Yeah, they, that's what I'm they saying. They are there's, dated, and there's four too is, much stuff to play. Four is perfectly modern. It, and, and you don't have to play thirty hours of Pikmin four. Like. You you could wrap up and have a satisfying ending much quicker than that. I have just yeah gone for everything because I'm I'm obsessed. Ah <sighs> man, sorry. I hope it gets DLC. I kind of doubt it, but I'm I'm curious to see the sales numbers. Me too. I'm extremely curious because it historically doesn't sell well. But they they've been marketing like I I think it's just my feed, but I'm seeing Pikmin everywhere right now. Yeah. Plus, I feel like. Games in the Switch era sort of get a boost as well, so. I, I wonder if Pikmin 4 is, like, I wonder if it's doing better with streamers, because it's it has a lot of extremely good streamer moments. Like, the, the reaction oh, yeah. to you making a mistake and killing 100 Pikmin at once is, it it's devastating. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> All I, I'll, right. I'll pass it. It's, play Pikmin 4, please. Or at least buy it. <laughs> you don't have to play it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> please. Mike, what about you? Uh, do, is this the time when I talk about Power Wash Simulator? I think so. Oh boy. I have 20 hours in a game about power washing things. That's wild, man. I mean, I, it's co-op, so being a friend will just play it, and we'll just zen out and just talk about random stuff at this point. Is that zen out? That's what they're calling it these days? Uh, just, yeah, just... <laughs> completely disassociate while power washing a really dirty dinosaur i've heard that this game is extremely satisfying it's a dinosaur so you're not like power oh. washing a deck or something you can power wash whatever you want it's a dinosaur sculpture. Things to power wash yeah it's uh, a dinosaur okay. sculpture your pet we power wash the gnome fountain i i like the playground uh, stage so so yeah, do you just like hold dinosaur. do you just like aim and shoot or is there's there a, actually more mechanics than that it's first person. it's like a first shoot. person game you walk around yeah, you walk around. Okay, okay. And it's it's like a first a- person game, and there is some like concepts that you have to grasp to wash effectively. But and there are like nozzles and stuff, right? That yeah, you can upgrade. there's nozzles and stuff yeah. that you can upgrade. But, but but mostly, yeah, it's just a it's a very chill it's game. Zen. It's a simulator. Like you walk in, you power wash, you leap. I've seen a lot of streamers play it. It is a very good stream game because it just allow. I don't have to think. I can just crack jokes. You're never going to get killed for looking at chat. Yeah, like, I'm just power washing. I don't matter if I'm looking at chat or not. Just power washing. It's just kind of satisfying. Yeah, it's... There is as much depth, but it has a uh, crossover with Spongebob in it. It enabled me to do some cursed things with the chum bucket sign. Uh- <laughs> mm. <laughs> Listen, I was sold on the DLC when my friend sent me a picture. Yeah, I'm like, ah, oh, yes, we need to do this. Yeah, shout out to the rusty, rusty crab. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild that that you said you had 20 hours in it. Like, I can't imagine. I'm like, it'd be cool for a little either. bit, but like 20 hours. 
Yeah, I've played it for like seven hours in one sitting before. Streamers are built different, Abbott. You'll never understand. Wow. You just get lost. You get lost. Like all of a sudden, yeah. you have power washed an entire house. And you're like, where'd the time go? <laughs> oh, man. No other I game does gaming. that for me. You got anything else? No, I don't have anything else. I was hoping that you would pick up after this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Well, I come to you boys in shame today. You haven't played any video games? No. You played I, Maple Story? So so you no. <laughs> so you left actually last episode when I talked about Diablo 4 Con. Oh yeah, I did. And I started off by saying how like fun and addictive it was, but by the end of the season how Blizzard kept actively making the game worse with they, each of their patches to the point where it was just infuriating. And you kept playing it anyway. All that being said, still playing the game. <laughs> Can't stop. Diabolical. Still playing season one. Diabolical. I like level fi- fifty-three druid. And um, I need to stop. I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I need to stop, and I can't stop. You need so, to stop and play Picklemen. I think, yeah, I need to play... Play Battle Bit. I need to play something. Battle Bit's really good, yeah. Battle Bit's I think for phenomenal. sure, I think for sure, when Armored Core comes out, that's going to tear me away from Diablo. But, like, for now, every time I sit down to play a video game, I just end up going back to Diablo, and it's, it's a problem. And a, a large part of that is because a lot of my friends are still playing it and it, then it just gets you know social aspect of it too i it have a hard time into- believing armored core is going to be able to tear you away when diablo tore you away from tears of the kingdom like that's that's a really fair point and that scares me yeah because i don't like i don't i want to play tears of the kingdom like i want to go back to zelda because like let me let me be unequivocal here zelda is a much better game than diablo 4 but i still want to play diablo 4 you know I kind of regret like, dropping the 70 bucks on Diablo 4. I had fun with it for a little bit, but I never even really got to experience yeah, the you, social you thing. Yeah, you didn't really I was, like, get into the end game or I bought the, ga- the campaign? No, okay. Here's what I'm mad about. I bought the game on launch day, and I was already way behind everybody because you morons pre-ordered it and played it yeah. early. And so I'm two days behind before I even get to start on launch day, and I never caught up. And so I didn't get to experience anything so And honestly, that is another part, like that FOMO, right? Because yeah. like everyone's leveling up so fast and you don't want to get left behind. Blizzard, man, like they have a bunch of problems, but they know how to like cook their games with crack or something. Like they they know how to make their games addicting. Like no, nah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm at the point where I like really want something to tear me away from Diablo Four, but it's just not happening. Give like, Pikmin a chance. I will, but you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta get Ammon, some if legendary if you, if you aspects on my druid. Give it one day, you'll fall behind, and you won't even want to. You won't even be able to look at it. You, you're actually so right. Like if that <laughs> happens, could, I'll probably just you, like uninstall it. Yeah, because it, it, it is. I have it installed on my Steam Deck. I have it installed on my PC. But I'm just, I'm so. I, I would be the weakest person in North America if I turned on Diablo 4 right now. Like, it's... Well, it wouldn't be too... Right, because it'd be like season one. It's only been like a week, I feel like. So you would still... I just don't care. I'm not... I don't yeah. see myself ever turning this... Game. I, yeah. Honestly, I, honestly, good. Stay away. Just yeah. stay away. I, I, I regret... I have, I have serious, in. like, buyer's remorse for spending the $70 on it. Because it's not even a cheap game. It was 70 bucks. Like... Yeah. And it was not, I don't know, the production value, I'm not going to say it wasn't worth 70 bucks. The production value is very high. The, the production core value loop is very is high. pretty fun. Gameplay loop is fun. It's just, it just seems weird that Blizzard seems to be at odds with the player base yet again. But they did put out like an apology video after the 1.1 patch, which is like something new that I've never seen anything like that. They put out a video and they were like, yeah, we're sorry. We're never going to put a patch like this out again. So I, I guess they're listening, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the game is objectively, I feel like, worse than it was at launch. Like, That's leveling wild. is slower, you do less damage, you die m- more easily. That all like, sounds all, terrible to me. All of these things are true. Like, their their 1.1 basically made the game harder. Because they, I guess they were upset with how many people were flying through the game or something like that. So they, they made everyone do less damage. They made everyone uh, everyone's resistances go down. And they made uh, leveling harder. They made, like, the XP curve. Like, because, like, you get much less XP now for killing monsters, basically. It's messed up. And it is messed up. And people were mad. And I was mad. I was mad. And then, like, a fool and a hypocrite, I played Season 1 anyway. And here I am. So, so when did Season 1 come out? I've not even... 
I feel like this uh, game came out. It two came weeks out ago. last. I think literally last Tuesday. Okay. So it's it's been like a week. Uh, you see, I I all of this, I just feel hopelessly behind already. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's for the best. I, I, like I say that unironically, it's for the best. Yeah. So, it's it's turning into one of those addicting games for me, and that's a problem. That's why I stay away from like MMOs and stuff because I know I'm susceptible to to this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, Diablo Four has become like another Destiny, another Maple Story for me, and mm-hmm. hopefully, I can break that sometime soon otherwise i'm just going to be talking about diablo for the next like three episodes if of the you show. have not finished tears of the kingdom for our game of the year talk i'm going to be really mad at you I'm i have i have to finish it before the end of the year it's july 25th right now i've got to finish it before the end of the yeah, year you really only have four months i need you to finish this game i will yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. so angry with you if i have <laughs> I, to, I will i promise if i have to skirt spoilers about tears of the kingdom four months from now <laughs> yeah yeah for a game I, of the I, year I'll finish discussion it. I'll finish. I actually, so I actually, I'm not ready to talk about this game yet, but I did start another game just sort of on the side, put very, I only put like an hour and a half into it, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, And I'll have maybe more to say about that in the near future. I hope so. But for now, Diablo 4, unfortunately, that's it. That's all I'm playing. That's all I have played. Degenerate. Pro- I have like probably over 150 hours now. I'd, oh. I'd have to double check. It's uh, it's a problem. Disgusting. And that's it. Uh, do we have any other games? That's it for me. That's it for me. All right. Well, on today's episode, we crowned a king, and that king is the PlayStation 3. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> so also, it, it is it wild me. to me that the two consoles we did like rankings for were the GameCube and the PlayStation 3. I know. That's so unfunny. So baked into our psyches is this, like, like this was the inevitable like conclusion. So, I don't know, man. That is that is wild to me. So, But anyways, I'm excited to see what... Uh, I hope our audience like fill out that bracket. I'm excited to see how they would fill it out. You can follow us at Ad Podcast Game Talk on X, I suppose. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Actually, let's just get off. Let's yeah, let's no, make a friends to, account or something. Yeah, yeah no, I'm gonna whip Mastodon. up MySpace. Yeah, honestly, let's just not. We don't we don't have let's social do media anymore. Want to be on X? Actually, you know what? Don't even listen to. This. <laughs> yeah, we record yeah, yeah, this for us uh, now i'm living in the moment uh, yeah <laughs> this is no longer real. i guess thing. yeah i guess technically we are on x but i don't know if i'm ever going to send out another tweet again another or whatever. an x An- another x <laughs> i don't <laughs> know if i'll ever name. x again god that's so stupid all right but you can click the link in the description of our podcast and join our discord please do that uh and uh, rate us, review us on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, etc. Thank you, Connor and Mike. Yeah, see you guys next week. See you next week. Bye.